Enthusiastic, exuberant, completely inept and deluded. I set out thinking this is going to be amazing, but I obsess over getting the right stuff together and trying to be cleverer than I am with, with cooking. Generally, that's what happens. Like I'll try and make a Sunday roast at home. And I set out with the best of intentions that it's going to be the best roast ever. And I like look up, how can I do roast potatoes in a really clever way? What can I do with cabbage that has never been done before? And then it's, it, I'm not very good. I don't often eat in my car. Not because I'm finickety about getting, you know, crumbs in the car or anything. I'm bothered about that. It's just that if you do, you end up eating limitless quantities of utter crap bought from petrol stations. And I broke myself of the hat. Actually, it was when I gave up smoking. Because until then, if I stopped to buy fuel, I'd always buy a packet of cigarettes, which meant I'd always buy a packet of crisps, which is like the main meal. So then you go to buy a chocolate bar for your pudding, and then you need to wash it down with a soft drink. But as soon as I gave up smoking, it broke that connection. So now if I stop for fuel, I just stop for fuel. I don't buy food. So I seldom eat in the car. I have eaten a chocolate bar on my motorcycle once. Bloody difficult to do. I'm a big fan of the Biltong for a road trip snack because it actually is reasonably healthy, I think. It's also but bloody good to eat. So a sack of biltong and I'll be all right. I did try being a vegetarian for about six months. And you know what, it was really interesting. I had some amazing conversations with long-standing friends whom I've known for many, many, many years that aren't vegetarians. And it's quite challenging when somebody suddenly pops up and says, I'm vegetarian now. But I really enjoyed it. I had some conversations I would never have had otherwise. Plus, when people ask on airplanes or film shoots or whatever you're doing on a day, uh, are there any dietary requirements? The first time that question was asked, I was, and then suddenly realized, oh yeah, me, I'm vegetarian, I'm special. But when something is done because it's fashionable, I suppose people dress fashionably, so why shouldn't they eat fashionably? Is veganism making a massive contribution to diminishing our carbon footprints? There are arguments that say, actually, the growth of cereals of cereal crops can lead to deforestation, changing the use of the land and could probably have a bigger effect. So I don't know. There are probably bigger things we could address before changing our diet if we want to reduce our carbon footprint and leave me able to use my Mustang, which is very important that we do that. Where I live in ross on wye there is one place to go. And I have to go there every bloody Sunday because we've forgotten something for the roast. It's Morrison's. Oh yeah. I mean, it's the only place to go, but it works for me. And they also buy their meat very well. A lot of my friends locally in Ross on are farmers. And they do say that actually the Morrison's buyers really do look out for good meat. So I can't argue with them. I have, get this, a steam oven, but like built in. Not one that you put on a hob or anything. And it's amazing because you can do like a... Okay, I can only do a fish curry in it. That's all I've learned how to do. But it is awesome. It takes 14 and a half minutes, including the... No, the rice takes 20. But anyway, it takes 14 and a half minutes, 20 minutes. And it's awesome with any firm white fish. Though I once tried making it with monkfish tail. And after I'd spent an hour looking up and learning how to prepare a monkfish tail, I'd gone off the idea. It's complicated. You can start with all the... Everything comes out so fresh and just tastes good for you. I really enjoy, from Vietnam I do like a pho, but if it had to pick a country for like all their cuisine, I'd probably say Italy. Actually, I'm not a big pizza fan, but pretty much everything else out of Italy. Yep. If I had to pick a favorite dish from Italy, it would probably be, don't laugh, it probably, no, it probably would be spag bol, I'm really sorry. Although there's a restaurant, I won't name, in, uh, in London where they make the most astonishing minestrone soup. It's just that. Black Americano, no sugar, every time. If it's after eight o'clock, it's supper. If it's before eight o'clock, it's my tea. It is. I'm a brummy. Coffee, black coffee. If I'm at home and I've got time, and this sounds like I live 
in Jeremy's words, in a yogurt commercial. But I will go out and I'll collect a couple of eggs from the chickens, because we have chickens at home. And the eggs are a thousand times better than what you'll buy. They're vivid yellow, crack that, and sunlight comes out of it. And I'll poach them to perfection. And there is only one way to do that. Raise the water to boiling, splash of vinegar, a little bit of salt. Take the water off and put a mi well, actually, whilst it's still boiling, stir the water vigorously. Crack your eggs into it, take it off, leave it for about eight minutes, and then you can just lift them out and look. And as soon as the white's done, thank you, perfection. And I've never had a hotel do it properly for me. James will tell you whenever we're away working. <laughs> if I order poached eggs, they need to line up about 10 before they'll get one right. I'm very fussy on those. I live in the countryside, and we don't have a Nando's nearby, so I'm not familiar with the Nando's. I've had it a few times when I'm in London doing what London people do and it's it's like chicken and stuff, isn't it? That's all right, spicy. I've had a really, really, really spicy one once. I like that. I'm a bit of a sucker for the gin and tonic. <laughs> and I was drinking it before it became fashionable. I'd like that to be known, as every hipster everywhere has said. Uh, I love a gin and tonic, I really do, because you really can taste the difference from one gin to the next. Yeah, I can with wine, I certainly can with whiskies, but gin, really pronounced difference. Also, in the mixes, the tonics. I'm not a fan of the fashionable tonics, I like a Schweppes, just plain yellow bottle, that'll do me. And then let the gin speak for itself. I, I, I do love a gin. I do like a Hendrix, I like a Monkey 49. Uh, I like Bombay Sapphire as an everyday gin. Fox is quite nice, there's quite a few local gins to me out in Herefordshire that I enjoy. Silver Fox I think is one. I do have at home an obscenely large number of bottles of gin. Mostly because then if I buy lots of bottles, if I then have a gin and, and it diminishes one bottle, I can leave it there and then take another one and I don't feel like I've had so much. That's probably a problem, yeah? I'm a fan of the bacon sandwich for hangover food, but it's got to be right. I'm afraid it's thin white bread, smear of ketchup, quite well done bacon, pushed together, a little bit of grease on there. That'll do me nicely, thank you. If it's not a bad hangover, I'll add a fried egg. But if it, that's kind of high risk, there's a break point for when that's appropriate and when it isn't. If it's a proper hangover, thin, crispy bacon, just one slice thick on thin white bread. Job done. Roast beef, every time, with horseradish. And I don't like that really thick gravy. I, I prefer a jus. I do, actually. So, roast beef with really well roast parsnips with honey on them. I love Marmite. And uh, my youngest daughter, Willow, and I, our favorite snack, if we're left to our own devices, we will always make, and this is brilliant, it's poached egg on beans, on cheese, on Marmite, on toast. You're thinking about it and you're thinking, yeah, and you'd be right. I have never cooked without drinking. No, I mean, apart from breakfast, but anything else, I, I can't. I will occasionally try and cook a Sunday roast for me and my wife and daughters. And yeah, that requires a lot of red wine to navigate the complexities of it, to soothe my nerves uh, and to ease the path to culinary success later that afternoon. My wife Mindy and I once tried together to cook pad thai but from scratch and there's roughly a billion ingredients and it, it's one of those where you end up buying a load of bottles of stuff that you're never going to use in anything else and then assembling them all and spending hours and realising it was nothing like as good as I could have gotten if I'd gone out and probably cost more. Years and years and years ago when I was working for another channel making car shows before the BBC even. I was on a car launch in France and they laid on lunch in a chateau. Very nice. Uh, and it was a sort of a help yourself type job. But I only realised after about 45 minutes I couldn't stop eating because it was very simple. There was suckling pig, that was quite complicated, but the rest of it was just tomatoes and mozzarella and you know, French stuff. But everything was so gorgeous. So simple, just the best possible ingredients. And it's the only time in my life I've had to physically tell myself, Hammond, stop eating, mate. You don't need any more. But everything just fired off every taste bud. And I wouldn't have stopped without making a conscious effort to do so until I burst. <laughs>